Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by the head coach of the RIT women's hockey team, Celeste Brown. Celeste is a former RIT player herself, where she won a Division Three national championship before helping RIT transition to Division One, where she helped lead the team to their first Division One tournament appearance. Celeste is currently in her second year of coaching the RIT women's hockey team after being an assistant at Penn State. So without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Celeste, and how's everything going? Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, things are starting to get exciting. We're headed down the stretch here of our season and, um, you know, playoff hockey around the corner. And that's, I think, everyone's favorite part of the year. So we're gearing up for the, the remainder of the season here. But uh, again, super excited to be on and just sort of talk about our program and our team and um, let people have a little bit of an inside glance. Yeah, so I kind of want, there's many things I want to get into, but I kind of want to start off with the beginning of your career and kind of how it transitioned into coaching. So you're from Montana. Um, how'd you start playing hockey just because Montana doesn't really seem like a hockey hotbed? Yeah, great question. I, I get this often because you're spot on. Montana is not a hockey hotbed. Um, there's really not, but, well, there is ice outside because it's freezing cold, but it's not a, you know, pick up pond hockey sort of space like you would have up in Canada. And how I got into it was a little bit of a unique story. Um, I got a pair of rollerblades for a gift of some sort. And um, there, we used to get these Wednesday envelopes, which were away in elementary school for teachers to send home graded assignments or news or whatever it was. And there was a little flyer in there, sign up for, for hockey. And I had taken to the rollerblades. And so I just remember, I think it was my dad, maybe my mom, like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yep, let's do it. And then sort of went from there. There was like a local junior, maybe a team, or I'm not quite sure at the time that played. And so that was exciting to, you know, sort of pair that. It was smaller town, not much to do. So we went to the games and then started playing. And that's where I sort of fell in love with it. Who was your favorite player growing up? Was it someone in the NHL or was it a female player on the national team? Yeah, this is um, I neither. So neither someone in the NHL or like women's hockey, to be honest. I, I knew like girls played hockey, but didn't grow up watching the Olympic team or I mean, maybe watched a little NHL, but not that I can remember. It was really like the local junior team. And there was this player like named Bud. And don't ask me why he was like number eight, but he was my favorite player growing up. It was a, a pretty cool experience where those players would give back to the community. So they'd come out after the games and talk to all the kids and were really hands on, always around the ring, you know, when we were there for practice. And so just was glued to watching that guy play. I probably had like 400 of his autographs. So that was, that was my favorite player. It was a, just a gritty guy that worked and not that I knew that then, but that was enticing to me. And um, still some of my favorite players are also gritty and just go to work and make people's lives miserable. Now, before you had to RIT as a player, um, you played for the National Sports Academy. So how'd you get the opportunity to play there and talk about how it prepared you for college hockey um, heading into RIT? Yeah. Um, I knew I knew at a younger age that I wanted to play college hockey, and we actually had a a player um, who was about close. I think she's like nine or ten years older than me, and she had found her way to Duluth. Um, this was like in the early two thousands, and I think she was on like the U twenty two team, and so. I'd seen her like sort of take this route and I knew like it was possible for girls to go play college hockey, but it was, it was very difficult in my town or even in Montana to get recruited. And so um, also was aware that kind of had to make a, a move. There was a, a couple players before me and in my similar age group that had gone away to whether it was boarding school or a sports school, which I ended up going to. Um, so the dream was to play college hockey and the opportunity sort of presented itself through um, district camps, which the U.S. is separated in districts and each age group goes. And there was a coach there from the National Sports Academy and the rest is sort of history there. 
Um, and so I ended up taking the opportunity to go and I went for a junior, uh, senior and actually a post-grad year. So three years total. And um, to this day, I think it's one of the better decisions I've made in my life because it led me to like unbelievable humans and unbelievable experiences and ultimately where I am today. Um, and it was super fortunate that it was a great fit and it, it, it prepared me like levels beyond what I could have it, um, thought because we went, um, you know, a very intense hockey schedule and like academics on top of it. And that, that pretty much was like your world for, you know, five days a week. And then on the weekends you were just playing games. And so at an early age, you had to be dedicated. Otherwise you weren't going to, you know, make it. And so when I came to college, actually, we were at the division three level and it was actually a little bit of a shock for me to go um, because the season doesn't start until October. It was a shock for me not to be playing hockey you know, from the minute I stepped on campus, it was so different than what I was used to. And so the transition in terms of hockey was was fairly seamless for me. I think the transition in terms of academics and workload of academics coming into a school like RIT was probably the biggest transition, but still had the tools and even just support system of, of friends and mentors to help balance it. So that was, that was probably the biggest thing it prepared me for, I think, too, just the higher level of hockey that I was playing out East um, helped. And I had great coaching who, you know, taught the game the way it should be taught and, you know, really gave you like a clear picture of what you needed to do when you got into college. Yeah. What was your recruitment process like as a player um, and why did you choose RIT? Yeah, the, the, the recruiting process is, is really unique for each individual and, um, I, I ended up taking a postgrad year because I, I, of course, had the dream to go Division One, and that's like every player's dream. And at the point of my senior year, I had gotten a, you know, a few sniffs, but nothing that I was satisfied with. Um, and just through mentorship, it was, it was sort of the mindset of, hey, let's try for one more year. And not that my options were bad, like Division Three hockey is very good hockey. It's, it's great. Um, opportunity for women, great opportunity for student athletes. But again, I just was holding on to that dream and that's, that's okay. And I, I thought with coaches to like that I was close. Um, and so kind of sifted my way through it my senior year and then into my post-grad year, um, played the whole post-grad year and talked to like countless division threes, again, a few division ones, but nothing was was working for division one i i um and i'm grateful for that i i think in the moment it was really a difficult situation and i empathize and sympathize with a lot of players now where you're surrounded by a lot of players that are going one direction if you have a dream you know it might not always happen in that moment um but looking back it was i ended up exactly where i needed to end up and so you know like i said I went on like a college tour with my sister to like eight or nine different schools to check out which school and what fit was going to be best for me. And again, that's like that mentorship that I got at National Sports Academy to make sure like, hey, look at the school size, look at the academic programs, you know, look at the sports, look at the coaches. It wasn't just placement. It was like finding the right fit for you. And um, RIT was actually one of my uh, tours. I took my sister and um, all of those things started to fall into place for me. So it was, I loved hockey, had invested so much in hockey and RIT is a hockey school. So, you know, no other sports are sort of bigger than hockey here and the sports are good and competitive. Lacrosse is very good and competitive. So they're, they're right there too. But um, again, a hockey school, so the community there, um, you know, the, the academics was important for me. And I knew I, I wanted a private institute, like, Personally, I just, that's the vibe I vibe with just, I think, due to like going to boarding school too is kind of a similar setup and it didn't feel so small or so big. So it fit like all of these categories for me. And um, then it just sort of fell into place. I made a decision, I think in either April or May after my postgrad year, so late and uh, again, like ended up exactly where I needed to be because the pathway forward was so unique and special 
I couldn't have predicted it, you know, at the age of 19. Yeah, and obviously your freshman year, you won the Division Three National Championship. Uh, talk about uh, that experience and what you took away from it. Yeah, that was incredible. Like, there's, you know, I get further and further removed from it uh, the older I get, but it was an interesting perspective because it is something like I carry with because it taught you like how to win, you know, and I think like to, we were, we were dominant and to be like dominant at any level is difficult because you have to bring your A game every day where every team is gunning to beat you. Every team is bringing their best against you. And so it really was um, understanding like, hey, we're on a mission and we're trying to get somewhere and like every detail, every game, every period, every shift matters. Um, and I think the, the other unique experience about it was just the group of girls that we had it, you know, you just come together for like a common cause. And um, again, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. I, I, um, and we won it on home turf, which was even cooler. Like we won it right here at RIT on a packed house and just solidifies the community that you can be surrounded by here. Um, so it was, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, and obviously you made the transition from D3 to D D1. Um, what are the differences, I guess, between Division One and Division Three, and um, how was that transition process like for you as a player, yeah. but also as a coach too, because you had that experience as well? Yeah, the the I'll start quickly with the player. The transition was fantastic. You go from being like the best at one level to then like having to work and prove people wrong. In my class, in general, we were like all in on that. We were like trying to prove every, I don't mean this negatively, like every hater wrong, like we were on a mission. And so the jump was, it was like intense at first. We, I mean, we all remember that first game played Mercyhurst. I think they scored like two quick goals in 30 seconds. Like it's fried into my brain. It was, and we're like, oh man, like we got to go. And throughout the season, we got progressively better, but the speed is completely different. The, the pace you need to make decisions at is different. The, the margin for error, meaning if you make a mistake, it ends up somewhere where you don't want it to end up. Um, but the transition was just to learn to like be a different level and that you can like go much further than you think you can maybe mentally. Um, if you like are determined, disciplined, and like, you want to do it, you know, willing, willing to be disciplined, really, and willing to like put the effort in. Um, and so it, it provided like unique perspective too, because you're, you're again, like top at one, one level, and then you want to like get back there because you've had a taste of what that success is like. Um, and there was definitely learning curves through each of my years at division one, um, both ultimately, like we had success, you know, at the, I, my class and myself had success at each level. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then from the coaching side, you know, it, it's similar, but it's similar in terms of just the, the hockey, but both levels are, of hockey are very good. Like division three hockey is just progressively getting better and better and better and better and better. Um, even from when the time I stepped into it. Um, and same with division one, I, I think you're, you know, I, I came from like a NESCAC school and then went to PSU in terms of coaching. And both of those are strong programs. So the NESCAC is really strong in Division Three, And so you, you're at a different level, but you're dealing with sort of similar ideology and mindset, meaning like those players at the NESCAC are, are competing for a championship. Like they want to win. You know, people at PSU wanted to win none of that sort of changes. It, it, it really comes down to maybe like skill time and development time that's needed. And, um, you know, just the, also the amount of time that's put into sports at each level. Um, but I, I think I, again, enjoyed both levels. I, I, I enjoy like aspects of each level differently, but, um, Overall, it was a it was a seamless transition. I had like a great coaching staff at um, Con who she let Kristen Seal let me do a ton of things in terms of responsibility. And so when I I felt prepared when I stepped into PSU and then working with J 
Jeff and Allison, they're, they're also like um, very cool humans and coaches. They, they just treated me like one of them and we're like, all right, let's go and do this. So um, yeah, I just did it. Yeah. And then as a player, uh, just getting back to that, you had some success um, in the division one level. Like you mentioned, you won a few CHA championships and you also made RIT's first national tournament appearance. Um, talk about what it was like making the national tournament and what it meant for yourself in the program and how yeah. cool is it as a coach to come back to the rink and see all those photos of your teammates um, at the tournament for the first time? Sure. It, it was a very cool path, meaning we won the tournament or the CHA tournament twice. And then finally my senior year, we were able to qualify for the national tournament just because of rules. And again, I, I think we played with this chip on our shoulder that was like, hey, we want to like make people know that we're not just a team. Like we're here to like do our thing and, and put up a fight. It was a very cool experience. Like we ended up playing Minnesota and they ended up winning the national championship that year. But again, to like compete at that level um, was sort of, you know, the pressure and the stakes are, are higher. We had done it our first year at division three. And so it was like, Hey, we're back here again. The game didn't go how we wanted it to. Um, but at the same time, uh, what a cool experience to sort of go through with my classmates. Um, you know, and it, it's not just, not even close to me. There was like countless people on the team that made that happen. So um, again, just for the school and for the administration and everyone behind us who support us going to the Division One level to be able to like do that and make it happen was cool. And then, you know, transitioning back to RIT as a, as a coach now is, is cool. Like I, I have a lot of pride in the school and try to be as unbiased as possible, but it is very cool in terms of like academics and community here. And then also just, it's a hockey school. Um, and we have a, you know, exciting future ahead of us. Um, but the, the history is important, but I also like have a perspective that I want to let these girls write their own history. Meaning say what happened in the past is sure we can acknowledge it, but like I want my players and the program to go on and write its own history and not sort of live on old, old building blocks um, because the world sort of changes. And so those pictures, they're up in some spaces, but I'm trying to like put new pictures on the wall really with new, new faces because RIT should be a, a strong program and that's what we plan on going to. Now, being the captain on that team, um, what type of leadership did you bring in? Have you brought some of your – is it like – my question is, like, did you learn anything from that experience being a captain, bringing that as a coach as well? Because I feel like it's like kind of a different leadership role um, in some sort of aspects of it because I feel like you can use kind of – you can kind of be more of an example to the players as a captain more than like a coach can be. Yeah, I um, – you know, I, I think any captain – of any team, any sport sort of recognizes the unique space. And, you know, it, it's sort of, you know, you have, it's, it's, I'm not quite sure the same. It's like heavy wears the crown or heavy is the head that wears the crown, basically, meaning, um, you know, you have to come into these situations and make decisions, not solemnly on yourself. And that was the case too, when I was a captain and um, I had great like support, in that too, meaning I had a co-captain, um, two assistants. And so we were like a unit. And so you understand like this unit within this big unit and the dynamics of that. And I think very early on, you start to recognize too, that not everyone's going to agree, but you have to like try to get everyone on board. And um, that's like a challenge. And so I started sort of managing humans young. And that's really what, what, leaders do I think is inspire and bring people along and help suck greatness out of them in any role that they play um, but also recognize that at the end of the day they got to make the decision that's best for the group and it might not always be in, in cohesiveness with everyone and so I, I bring a lot of that um, to my coaching today I, I think also advantages my age it's 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 also I'm, I'm closer to age in them and so I, I've been you know more familiar with a playing perspective as of recent 
Um, and so I can still like uh, step back into those shoes very easily. And, and especially coming from RIT, I can literally walk the walk that they walked. And so I'm like, Hey, I, I know what it's like to come from this class into this setting and I can rely on that, but it's, it's to my ability, you know, just to form relationships with each player. That's, that's the leadership too, is, you know, when you're a, a captain on a team, you're making, making sure everyone knows that they're valuable and, and not just, you know, on the surface, but legitimately. And so the details matter. And that's what I, I try to do now is just, you know, look out, look out for these, these humans here as human beings first, and then work my way to them as, as more than that, as in terms of hockey players, athletes, students. Um, but again, just, I'm, I'm more fortunate. I, I have had more fortunate opportunities than that I've been able to grow from than that, you know, I, I feel like I experienced as a captain. Now, is that is this the best college hockey memory you have as a player making the national tournament or winning the Division Three national championship? I'm curious. I don't know. That's like, that's really hard what my favorite hockey memory is. Um, both of those are cool memories, but to be honest, I don't know if I would even put those as like my favorite hockey memories. When it comes down to my favorite hockey memories are just like being with the people I love, like whether it's at practice, whether it's in the locker room, whether it's in those moments. And of course, like the wins and the exciting wins are always in the forefront. Um, but simple stuff from like being in the locker room on downtime and just talking and talking about different things. Those, those sort of stand out in my brain. And, you know, I was really fortunate to have um, like my time at NSA and even some of my younger times as a youth in Montana um, to have like pretty cool moments and all of that. So they're up there, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know if I can pick one. <laughs> that's, that's hard. They've, they've all been exciting to be honest. We'll just say all of them. So <laughs> there we go. Now I kind of want to get into your coaching career for a little bit. So after you finished your kind of pro hockey career, what, what made you realize that you wanted to get into coaching and how did that like um, opportunity come about for you? Yeah, I, I didn't always know I wanted to be a coach. I, I thought I wanted to go into like nonprofit work or work in a community based, you know, profession or, you know, I, I sort of knew too that I was interested in like doing something with young adults maybe. And when I say young adults, like college students, it was weird. Um, but it's probably around my junior or senior year of college. I was like, Oh, maybe coaching could be fun. Still didn't quite know, which was totally okay. I did know I wanted to play hockey as long as I could. I, I love this game. I knew I loved every aspect of it. The humans I've met, the experiences I've had, um, the growth, you know, that's, that's sort of addicting too when you get better and better and better. Um, still, I, I don't think I was that, I wasn't that good, but I still enjoyed like the process of it. Um, and so the main goal was to play like after. And so I was able to make that happen. And then sort of after my first year of playing after college, it, you know, wasn't necessarily working in my favor. I, I wasn't finding like the, the next space to sort of play and, um that's just the reality of the world that you know athletes live in and so I was like not ready to leave the game and I was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try coaching and see where it sort of ends up like I've I've experienced so much from this game I want to give back like similar opportunities that I was able to to get and um just sort of started emailing different people and I shot an email to Kristen Seal at Connecticut and she had recruited me a little bit too I was there on a visit and was potentially like interested in in con college and I just remember driving down for an interview and then it like happened fairly quickly and I think like that prior sort of relationship and her knowing sort of who I was as a high school player and at the division three level helped um and so that might not be as exciting as you want but that's how it that's how it happened yeah. and then from there was just you know, again, like enjoying that year. And I played a little bit too. It was a good balance of being able to go to practice and be a practice player for the whale and, and coach and start a profession in this, in this sport. 
And then you went on to code, be the assistant coach for Penn State. Um, talk about your experience at Penn State, learning about the CHA, because from just doing some research on that kind of experience, you've coached some incredible players with Penn State. You coached uh, Natalie Heising, who's one of the best players in your conference, and Mallory U- Uline, who, in my opinion, doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best defenders in the CHA as well. Yeah, so um, PSU is a pretty special space. Um, when I, when I was fortunate enough to go, it was a whole new coaching staff and mentioned a little bit earlier was with Jeff Campersall and Allison Kumi and they're both seasoned sort of veterans in the sport. Um, and so we jumped in hitting the ground running, like we were on a mission to rebuild that program and, and put it like on a map. Um, and you know, you walk into a big 10 setting and you're like, Oh, this is like professional sports pretty much. Um, and so it allowed me to, to learn and grow my craft, meaning I had the flexibility to work with these players or watch a ton of film or recruit or, you know, do things that you might not get to do at a Division three level because you're maybe managing some different tasks that weren't, you know, separated out. And so it's cool in terms of um, opportunity I had and, and Natalie was a freshman, I believe, when I came in, and she's a fifth year now, and uh, it was crazy. I was there with her for three years, and she had, like, a substantial amount of growth, and she's still, like, growing, um, but I think, like any great player, the credit goes to them, because um, you can work with them, and you can help hone their craft, but I, I always tell, like, every player I work with, like, ultimately, your best teacher is you meaning like how engaged are you in whatever you're doing and how are you reflecting and problem solving in in that. Um, And so, you know, without her like drive or compete or want to get better, she wouldn't get better. So um, the credit is, is really to her. And if if she learns some stuff from me, like great, if you can just help improve every kid, you know, little by little or put a little tool in their tool belt or sharpen their, you know, knife that's, that's pretty good. Um, and then Mallory came in a little bit later and it's been fun actually to watch her grow from this side of the bench because I think she was still young when I was with her and now she's an upper class lady and she's coming into her, her role. Um, but it, it, it was exciting. It's exciting to like compete and, and recruit certain players and, and look forward to the future. And that's, that's sort of where we are now. Like we're in a space where we get to, you know, recruit players that we want and bring them in and, you know, help sharpen their knife and put another tool in their tool belt and, and see where they sort of go to. And then you obviously became the head coach of RIT Women's Hockey. Um, how cool did it feel to get that honor and uh, talk about how the opportunity came about for yourself? Yeah. So, um, super fortunate to to be back and super fortunate that the administration at the time like entrusted me to come and take over the program um and again like the opportunity presented itself like uh in the summer and uh was just a matter of you know the position opening and then there was a pretty extensive search um for the next next person so it was a long elongated search um I knew that uh the opportunity was important for me to pursue just because it was an all mater I was still young in my coaching career but um felt like um felt like I knew the school well enough knew the situation well enough and um you know had enough passion to like sort of put the work in that needed to be done and um I had like a a vision and went through the interview process and talked about my vision, talked about where I want to take the program, how I want to take it there. And again, fortunately I got the, the job. It was, it was like a difficult decision because we were on a pathway forward at PSU. Um, But at the same time, when opportunity like presents itself, you got to be all in. And so I was all in once the opportunity presented itself. I, I, um, I know I I knew like I always wanted to be a head coach and so there's there's you can't be a head coach until you are one right and you can't like walk through those shoes until you do and so I learned a ton from my head coaches um, that I worked for but until I am one how do I really really know what it's like 
Um, and so again, like I, I have like orange blood in my veins. And so that's an advantage that not a lot of people have. Um, and I, I made my, my transition and made it in the pandemic, which was really unique and still in some of that. Um, but it's, it's been, it's been fun. I've learned a ton. I've been surrounded by great assistants and great administration that I'm grateful for. And again, I can't wait for the future of the program. And currently the program is not, I guess, where you want it to be. Your team hasn't won a game yet this season. So talk about what you've seen from the team, I guess, this year and uh, what improvements you think you can make this year to help grow the program for the future to have success like you did as a player. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the season isn't where we want it to be uh, in terms of win or loss. And, you know, I, of course, like we all want to be competitive. My players want nothing more but to be like, winning games um and competitive I should back up competitive isn't the right word because at this point we are competitive and um it's a matter of like sealing the deal and winning and we have those conversations a lot but if you look at our team from the beginning of the year to now it's it's a completely different team I also think it's you know it's a matter of again sealing the deal figuring out the third period because we've gone into countless games into the third period either tied or ahead and then something happens um and so we we have like a a lot of younger kids we had 12 freshmen one transfer that's a sophomore this year and we threw them into crazy situations right away where a team normally would have maybe five first years and they're not in all of the intense situations it was the exact opposite from us so we were demanding you know, like I have a freshman D who's playing over 30 minutes a game. And so that's, that's a big task for our first year, along with all the academic and social uh, changes. Um, but we've, we've been playing well as lately. Um, the goal, like for this semester was to put us into every situation where we can be competitive in every game. And uh, we're doing that again, we need to figure out some of the moments in the game, but like we're harder to play against than we were at the beginning of the year we're letting teams know like, Hey, we're here. Like you're going to have to work if you want to like get through this. And so that's, that's pretty cool. And I I give it like hats off to the leaders inside the room and my assistants for, you know, keeping the group together and keeping the group getting better day after day after day after day and just putting bricks on our, on our foundation for the program moving forward. And so it is a matter of like developing players also, um, you know, getting better with each recruiting class and then um, just trusting the process and, again, making sure that everyone buys into doing their job, sort of like Bill Belichick's, like, know your job, do your job, um, quote. Yeah, that's kind of like my next question, I guess, what are your future plans uh, for the program and for the development of your players? Because you were saying how you had 12 new players. I think that's the most in any team for D1 hockey this year. So, yeah, so... I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, we have uh, we. If you look at those players from the first semester, second semester, they're different humans. It's insane. Um, just more mature, more comfortable in their play. Um, again, like that first semester, I'm throwing everything at them. Things they haven't heard before, systems they haven't heard. Plus, they have like pressure. They put it, you know, not from me, but just self pressure. If you want to be great, you have this self-pressure you put on yourself and so it's it's me navigating that helping them recognize that they're getting better day in and day and building confidence in that and so we've had like a handful of excuse me players flourish in the second semester and we're constantly in conversations with them about feedback and what we're seeing teaching them the game through video or teaching them game through scenarios or what we're doing in practice or right in the game and again, they're like sponges pretty much and they're just getting better and better. And so for some of these years, for some of these players, it's a, it's a quicker development than others. And it's just dependent on the player that we get in the door. That being said, like our, our, the NCAA just voted on us getting athletic scholarships in our recruiting where we didn't have that until a week ago. And so that is like substantial news because now that levels our playing field in terms of recruiting and the players that we're, we're able to recruit. Um, and just excited to get some, some players in here 
that uh, will have sort of impact immediately. But again, it's a process. So that's, that's a little bit out in the future, a couple years out in the future, but um, hope to get some of those players in there when we can that come in and already start at a different level um, than players that have in the past. And that kind of leads off to the final question I ask everyone. I always ask players this, but what advice would you give a younger player who uh, is, is trying to make it to D1 college hockey? But I want to get from your coach's perspective, like what should be done to try to get noticed by college coaches and make it to that D1 level? Yeah, uh, really unique question. I I think it's the the best piece of advice I can can give you is is, and I don't even know if it's great, but just if you're doing it because you enjoy it, that's good. And again, like just trusting the process in that. Like the minute it doesn't become enjoyable, that's okay. And, um, but if you enjoy like every, every ounce of development, every ounce of sweat or every ounce of smile that you put into it, like you're going to end up successful and only you can divine, define that success. Like no one else has the power to. And so the outside world like tells us that you have to play like division one hockey. And I, I know you asked me like to get to the division one level, but I think there's other great levels of hockey that grows our game and makes you a better player too. So just trust like where you're supposed to end up. And that's what I, I ended up doing without knowing it. And it, I'm fortunate that it put me in the space I'm supposed to be in today. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Celeste. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to myself. Um, Hope you have a great rest of the season and um, stay safe. And um, I hope the program um, continues to grow as it is now. It's been fun to watch. Great. Thanks. Thanks for covering our sport and thanks for giving a glimpse to RIC.